Hey everyone and welcome back. So in this video we're going to create our C++ project and we're going to create some of the initial classes that we'll need for the project that we'll be working with for the rest of the playlist. Just a quick recap and to mention that for the playlist I'll be using version 4.22 of the Unreal Engine because this allows me to also use Visual Studios 2019. If you watched the previous video in the playlist, you would have seen that and the process of getting it all installed. Like I've mentioned, I haven't done anything off screen besides that. So the installation process you saw to get that working with 4.22 uh, has all been done in that video. And if you follow along, you should be able to follow along with the rest of the tutorials just as I provide. So to create a new project, like with any other project, we're going to hit the launch button inside of the Epic Launcher. And this will bring us here and for some reason close the Epic Launcher in the background. With that done, you may assume that we're going to create a C++ project, uh, but in fact, I'm gonna create a blank blueprint project. And there's a few reasons for that, and I'll go into that once we actually have the project created, but I would recommend you follow along as I'm doing here. I'm just gonna call this YouTube underscore CPP. With that done, make sure you have the project in the desired folder, and we can hit create project. Now, whilst this is loading, in fact, rather than doing a cut, I'll just start explaining. So the reason I've done it this way is that if you create a C++ project, it will automatically create a game mode, a C++ file game mode for you, uh, which kind of throws off the folder hierarchy structure. And that, that just annoys me because uh, it will create a list of C++ folders. It will nest the game mode into the root folder. Uh, and generally you like to drop things into public private folders for different classes. You'll have like a character folder structure, a game mode folder structure, and then you always have that initial game mode just kind of sat in the root folder unless you want to play around in Visual Studios changing the uh, the references and the redirectories for C++ classes which can be a huge headache so it's generally easier to just start doing it this way create a blueprint project and then add your C++ content afterwards it tends to be at least for me much much easier so what we're going to do to make this a C++ project is go to our file option uh, we want to go down to the new C++ class and then we're going to create a new class so I'm gonna start off with the character that we'll be using. Just because the character class has more in it, that will give us a lot more to play around with in C++, like the movement components and things like that. So we're gonna make a character class, and this is what I mean by the folder structures. You can see here we have the option for a public and a private folder. So generally, when you create any new C++ class, you'll be given two different files. You get a .h file and a .cpp file. Now the .h file, the header, is where you're going to be housing all of the variable uh, declarations. So you'll be creating the variables, the functions and things like that in the header file. And then you'll be actually implementing them in the .cpp file. Uh, and the rule of thumb is that the header files can be public. Other classes can access them if they need information, if they need to find out what variables a character has assigned but the CPP files tend to be private because other classes shouldn't be diving directly into calling functions or things like that in C++ from one class to another. So they're kept private and the headers are kept public. So to do this, first of all, I'm just gonna give the class a name. Uh, again, general rule of thumb is that you will prefix the name of the class with the, the name of the project or the start of the name of the project, just in case you wanted to create something called just character, for instance. And because character is a class which already exists in the C++ hierarchy, uh, it will say here that the name is already used. So if you wanted to then just call this, we'll say YouTube character, that is then fine. And that also gives you a nice naming structure for the rest of the project as well. So we'll have things like YouTube game mode, YouTube character, uh, YouTube porn, just so that uh, we always know that they are our classes and there's no conflict with the names. Uh, for this one now, I'm actually going to call this one YouTube character base, just because in case we make any other classes based on this one, then again, we know this is our base class. Finally, I'm going to come down here, um, and after the path, I'm going to actually add the word characters, just so that this class is then nested in the characters folder. So again, if we make multiple different character classes, they can all go here, and we, we already have the beginning of a nice hierarchy in the project, uh, and a nice structure so that we can actually quickly see where things are going. And then I'm gonna make this public just so that this gets split into the correct public private uh, categorization. And we again, we can see this is already added the public folder here and then just move the characters folder back a bit. Okay, so if those changes made, we can now make our class. Spent a lot longer on this video explaining these things than I will on any other video, so don't worry about that. Uh, but this is just the structure that we'll take for the whole of this playlist. So now that I've explained why we're doing it, I shouldn't need to recap or recover any of this, hopefully. 
So apologies if that did seem a bit long-winded though, but if we hit create class, this will now start compiling and creating our first C++ class for the project. And that will make this a C++ project now rather than the blueprint project it is. Okay, so that has all done compiling. It's created the new class for us. And I just wanted to return here before we go to the Visual Studio file. Uh, we can see that we've now got the C++ classes folder. It will give us the YouTube CPP, which is the name of the project. And we now have our public folders. So the first thing we have in the public folder is our characters. Uh, and this is going to be our YouTube character base here. So when we start adding new things now, like I said, we're going to get extra folders appearing when we add different class types just to keep things nice and tidy. We can double click into this and this will bring us into the Visual Studios layout. There's so much content online for learning C++ that I don't want to go too deep into like the very basics. I, I think one of the best ways of learning anyway is just kind of doing things. So you'll start picking things up as we go through this, but I will cover a few of the important things. So just again, to recap on what I've mentioned previously, if you're not familiar with this, we have our two file types created. We have our .h and our .cpp. Generally, they're both open together when you open something from the Unreal Engine. Uh, if one of them isn't, you can, uh, for instance, have just closed the .cpp. We can go to source the YouTube folder. And we can see here, this is where it's actually quite important. Although we didn't see this in the engine, we have our private and our public folders. So the C++ class, like I mentioned, is in its private folder and the header is in the public folder. So we can toggle between these. If you want to open it permanently, we just double click this and it'll come over here. And another really handy shortcut is that we can right click. If you're not familiar with the shortcuts, right click to get the most commonly used ones. And we can toggle between the header and code file. So the shortcut for this is quickly pressing Control K and Control O. Uh, I tend to find I use that quite a lot. And that will, like I said, just toggle between them. So nice and simple. If you want to add something quickly into the header file and then go straight back over to the code file to actually implement it. So like I said, the header file is where we're going to be defining a lot of things. So we can see here, uh, this is just the constructor. So all C++ classes will come with a constructor. Um, if you're familiar with blueprints, kind of similar to the construction script. So this is where you will define some of the basic parameters. So you can set things up for variables like the max health, the uh, current health and things will be set in the constructor so that anytime you, you launch the game, they will be, uh, they'll have a value ready to go. And we can see this is just the name of the class followed by the name of the class again. That's how you define a constructor function in C++. And the only thing by default they do in the Unreal files is they'll set the tick event to be true. And that's because we're also using the tick functions. So this is the definition of the tick function, which again, we can see in the header file. If we double click on this, we'll highlight the, the function name. Again, we can right click on this and we can peek or we can go to the definition or declaration. So the definition is the one that you find in the code file. And uh, the declaration, of course, is going to be the one that you find in the header file. So again, this is just a nice, simple way you can start learning these shortcuts to go to and from the two different uh, files that you have for each class. And then finally, we have uh, the same for begin play. So uh, self-explanatory, same as the tick. These are override functions because these are obviously being defined in the child class. So this is a character class, uh, which will be inheriting things from the pawn class. Uh, and that structure in the inheritance of Unreal. So these are overrides, which is always important that we are calling the super, which is just running anything which is in the child version of the begin play, uh, sorry, the parent version of the begin play, and the parent version of the tick events are being called first. And then we can add the, the logic that we want to happen in our tick event here. And finally, just because these are here at the moment, I wanted to mention what they are. We, we have our setup player input component, and this is just where we're going to be adding our bindings, our axis events, and things like that will be done in this function here. And again, that's already been defined for us in the code class, so we're ready to come in and add our bindings. Now, we'll probably find that we won't be using the tick in this class, so rather than leaving this entire video with no code whatsoever, let's have a quick look at how we can get rid of a function. So what we want to do is we're gonna come back into the header first of all. Uh, we want to get rid of the tick function uh, we don't need that to be declared. And then whenever you get rid of something in the header file, if you've created its counterpart in the code file, we're going to come back in and get rid of that as well. We can see we've now got the red squiggly to say that it doesn't exist because we haven't defined it and we're going to get rid of that. Now we can also, that does mean as well, we can set the B can have a tick to be uh, false, which means this isn't going to run the tick event at all. Uh, just generally coding, uh, not using, not having the tick enabled 
when you don't need it is just going to add that little bit more performance and of course it's going to be best to try and avoid using tick where possible and from what i can see at the moment we can always add that back in if we find we do need it but for a character class we're going to be doing a lot of things on the input events and things like that so we shouldn't need anything running constantly on tick anyway so if those changes made we can save that uh, if you're using visual studios it's Control shift and b to build this and then we can get all of this and make sure that these changes haven't caused any errors and we'll get this uh, output log down here and of course you can come up and press build and build solution here if you wanted if you're using anything else if you're on uh, linux mac or just using something like visual studio code then of course you won't get these options and in which case you want to come back over to unreal hit the compile and compile it in here again just to make sure that you haven't had any errors but something as simple as taking out a function like that shouldn't cause anything and of course we already saw on my version that built perfectly fine in visual studio but again we get the same output log here all comes back and that has compiled correctly okay so that is very very simple just wanted to get the project set up first of all uh, we will actually be coding in the next video we're going to be adding our character input we're going to be creating the the class in its entirety for the most part to have it running around have a simple uh, some simple camera functionality and stuff like that so i'll leave that video here for today as always if you enjoy these videos or find them useful please do leave a like and share the video around that always helps and of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.